Hey everybody, it's Paula. Welcome to my channel, Stitching in High Heels, where we talk about everything related to needlework, whether it's cross stitch, crochet, uh, I hope to dabble in knitting really soon, um, occasionally do a little bit of sewing, but mostly cross stitch. And pardon me, my glasses were a little crooked there. Uh, today is March 10th, and for those of you who are new, I hope you find something that you like here and that you'll come back, that you'll subscribe, ring the bell, all the floss tube things, or excuse me, YouTube things, um, so you know when I post a new video. Generally, I'm trying to post every other week. Usually, I try to record on Sundays. Sometimes it's Monday until it gets, uh, gets edited and, and posted for you all. Um, but that's kind of my schedule. For those of you who are my regular viewers, welcome back. I'm happy you're here. Um, I really love sharing what I'm working on and my plans with everyone. And um, I'd love, you know, definitely leave me comments. Been having some conversations in the comments, and I really enjoy that. Um, there are a couple people that I'm, I'm really getting to know better through those sorts of discussions, uh, especially Karen the Owl Stitcher. Um, I'll link her video below. Um, we've had some really great conversations going um, in com comments on my videos and on hers. Um, she works on a lot of smalls. Um, she also works on some very big full coverage pieces and um, she's a musician so she generally shares some music with us which I also enjoy. So like I said I will link her below. Um, I've got quite a bit to share is including a um, really big both in terms of size and uh, in terms of importance to me finish that I'm really excited to share with you. You've probably seen it if you've been following me on Instagram, but uh, I haven't shared it here. Uh, the last time I filmed was February 25th. So I'm going to show you um, what I worked on since then and we'll go from there. Also, um, in my last video, I asked if you would like to see um, more pieces that I'd stitched previously or if you'd rather, as I go through my charts, looking to um, kind of rehome some of them if you'd like to see them. And I got a mixed response. Um, generally speaking, you, you guys said that you wouldn't mind seeing some previously stitched pieces and you also wouldn't mind seeing some charts. So I've got a little bit of that today as well. So let's get started because I'm really excited to share that big finish with you. So. First up, I'm going to show you a piece that I started and finished. This was part of my WIPGO goals for this month. Uh, if you're not familiar with WIPGO, it is a um, bingo style challenge that is the brainchild of Jessie Marie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff. And she was gracious enough to share it with the community and it's really taken off. And um, essentially what it is, is you put 25 goals in a, like I said, a bingo style board and she calls two, two numbers a month and you work on those goals. So um, in typical Paula fashion, I jumped right in and I have three boards and um, one of them is to at least get a good start on ornaments um, that I had bought fabric for from previous issues of the Just Cross Stitch ornament. Um, issue. Um, most of these are from around 2002 to 2004 or 5. And um, another one is to finish some ornaments. You'll see my plans for that for this month that I had stitched previously that have been just languishing in my storage uh, container and I'd like to get them up and on my tree. And the third one is to actually work on some pieces that I have in progress or my works in progress, which is what WIP WIP stands for in this community if you're new and, and you weren't aware. So the first piece I'm going to share with you is both a start and a finish. As I said, it was one of my WIPGO goals for this month. This is called The Gift and it's by the Sampler Works. And pardon me, I have notes over here if I'm looking over. And this is from the 2002 Just Cross Stitch Ornament Edition. And here it is. Um, this is stitched on a piece of 40 count magnolia linen by Lakeside. I had bought a special sized cut for this. It was stitched in silks and the silks that it called for were a vera soie, I think it was soie de Paris, and I didn't have any of those. So I did want to stitch with silks, so I went through my stash um, and found, so the red 
is Wine and Roses by Thread Gatherer. The green is Emerald by Dinky Dyes. And the cream color is uh, Oatmeal Scone by Belsois, which is uh, classic color works dyes them. And then the, um, the crown is stitched with uh, uh, a petite, petite treasure braid. I forget which one of the golds, golds it is. So uh, I've been stitching a little bit on 40 count, doing some cross stitch on 40 count, and I really don't mind cross stitch on 40 count. Uh, I can certainly say I do not enjoy specialty stitches, at least these specialty stitches on 40 count. I think part of it is they wanted you to do the satin stitch flowers with two strands, which uh, I love the look, but working on it was kind of tough to see the threads. And also, um, don't look too closely, but you can probably see that my border pieces are not symmetrical. Part of that is those red flowers. I misread the chart and they're stitched wrong. Um, but in honor of Jean at the attic and her always forward, I wasn't going to rip them all out. And ripping out that border, which is a single strand of silk on the 40 count, uh, was just not going to happen. So I will do my best to finish this in a way that minimizes the unevenness. Um, also, I did leave out um, so that the cream flowers were stitched differently on the chart, and there were other flowers, you know, in each of these, in each of these empty sections here, and here, and here. Sorry, I always do this backwards in the camera, right? Um, and I just because my border is messed up and not as symmetrical as it should be, they just didn't look right in those empty spaces. And uh, the, the flowers that were stitched were buttonhole stitch, and then you cut out the centers of the flowers. Uh, it looks amazing in the model. And I did not uh, choose to do that because I didn't want to cut on 40 count. So this is my version of the gift, and I'm, I'm satisfied with how it, came, how it came out. It's not, not my favorite ever piece, but I'm okay with it. Uh, next up is just, this is a finish, and this is one of my Whipgo ornaments from February, and this is called Joy of the Holidays, and this is by Needle Play Designs, and this is from the 2004 Just Cross Stitch Ornament Edition. I don't know if you can see this center medallion. This was a lot of fun. This is cut work with wrapped bars, and then there's, there's beads, beads in the center here. Let's see if you can... If I can get it close enough so you can see. Then there's a few beads down in the berries and the leaves. It's not, my camera doesn't focus up close real well. Um, let's see. Yeah, I just really, I, there are small gold beads on all the intersections in the center there. This was a fun stitch. Um, you could definitely tell it was from the early 2000s. A lot of backstitch in the vines and the berries down below. But it does help give some definition. And uh, I enjoyed stitching that one. And that one is stitched with all of the called for materials except the beads. I had uh, Delica beads that I subbed out for the gold mill hills just because I wanted to use them. And didn't have enough for any kind of a large project. So I thought they, fit, they do fit nicely in those intersections. And next up is, uh, this is from Just Nan, and this is also from the 2002 Just Cross Stitch Ornament issue. And this one's called A Little Joy, and there's two parts to it. So this is the main part here, and this is stitched on a Graziano 28 count gingham linen. I think Graziano is an Italian made linen. And I remember when this ornament, came, this design came out, this was kind of new, at least to us in the States, and it was kind of all the rage, so to speak. And I don't know if it's because we're so used to stitching on hand dyes these days, but I really found, I found it to be not really a stiff linen, but almost like a, a rough linen or a scratchy linen. And I didn't enjoy it as much as I anticipated that I might, but I really, I really like how this came out. So you'll see the center section there is not stitched and is pretty empty. And that's because this little piece here, which is stitched one over one 
on also on a Graziano linen, but this is a 32 count linen. Let me see if I can get it close enough that you can see it there. It's like a miniature sampler. There we go. With a house and the word joy and some snowflakes and some stars. There we go. Um, that's also on a piece of Graziano linen, like I said, 32 count, one over one. And this gets framed in a little charm that I didn't bring up with me. I do have it. Sorry, I got hair in my mouth here. Uh, I do have that charm, and that gets, so this little piece gets framed, and then it gets hung in the center, not stitched piece on that other ornament. So that'll be fun to finish. I'm afraid mounting that little piece in that frame is going to be a bit fiddly, but it'll be worth it in the end. And then my last finish, so I, I do pretty good on finishes, right, for the last two weeks. My last finish is Earth Dancer by Marilyn Levitt Imblem. And I honestly do not remember when I started her, but I do believe she was in my whip pile. And I got all I got all of the stitching done, and then I, I thought she was on a 36 count linen instead of a 32 count, and I was really worried about the beads because the model is stitched on 28 count, and I can understand why. Uh, thankfully, I found the packaging for my fabric and it's actually a 32 count, which, so the beads are still tight, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I really was concerned about the fringe. Uh, the original fiber called for was a Rainbow Gallery Ultra Suede, and uh, I had heard that it was challenging to work with and that it didn't hold up well and would fray easily. And then I did see a recommendation, and I will pass that along to you, uh, if you're waiting to stitch this and you're, you want to stitch the, the suede in the fringe, um, there's a fiber that I used called Super Suede, which is a little more durable, holds up well, is easier to work with. And I also was talking to some other folks when I posted my finish on a couple of Facebook groups, and I, people have stitched the fringe using six, six strands of DMC, and I could see that looking just as pretty. But... Uh, here she is, probably 20 years in the making. Here is my Earth Dancer. And maybe, just maybe, this will get picked as my thumbnail. So she's all stitched in DMC. She's a Butternut Road Designs from, I think, 1994, 96, somewhere around there, if I remember correctly. I didn't bring the chart up with me because she was a finish. And uh, she's mostly DMC with beads. And she did have, so then the, the fringing, like I said, is this super suede. So is the outside of the dream catcher. The inside of the dream catcher is a Caron, it's not Water Lilies, Bravo, I think is the name of the thread. It's a cotton. And the only thing, and I did buy it because I got this as a kit, so I did have calls for whisper over here in one section of her wing and quite honestly um, I don't think it was necessary and I'm not sure why it was there because you really don't notice it much but the beating on her is absolutely it's intense and fantastic and I love it and let me see if I can get her closer so you can see her in all see the beating so all of this on the top of her bodice there is beaded and it's pretty, it's pretty much solid beading. Let's see if I can get it so you can see that. And then the other part I really like, so, and there's, there's the fringing there on her dress. This is pretty easy to work with. And then I also really like the, where are they? They're over here. So the, I thought the feathers hanging from the dream catcher came out pretty cool. They're really long bugle beads on the stems there. So, once again, let me show you to show her to you one more time. Here is Earth Dancer, and there she is. I am just thrilled with having her finished. I also have if and I didn't bring the chart up with me. Let me get her out of the way over here. Um, but I also have, if you're familiar with Mar with Butternut Road Designs, there's another one called, which is almost a companion piece called, called Spirit Dancer, which is an older woman 
with a medicine wheel and she's holding a bird in her hand. And I have that one. I have the fabric that I bought. So that's stitched on a very old Silk Weaver Solo. It's a 32 count. I think it's Lugana. Uh, so that didn't help with the beading because the, the uh, weave tightened up during the dyeing process. But I bought a half yard of fabric and I do have the other half to do Spirit Dancer. And I have all of her beads and the specialty fibers for her. And I'd like to get her done. I, I don't know when I'll start her. Probably sooner rather than later now that I'm I'm still all excited about uh, having this one finished and then I'm almost thinking um, if you I've watched Carla being crafty if you're not watching her you should be uh, she does amazing work and she does weekly videos and she works on a, a variety of things she works on some full coverage she does quite a bit of crocheting she works on smalls she works on mill hills she kind of like me she's got pretty eclectic taste in what she stitches and uh, she has a couple smaller pieces that she framed with their, uh, I think they're meant to hang posters, and they're two wooden pieces, top and bottom, and they clip with magnets to the piece, and they hold the piece. So you've got weight on the bottom to keep the piece straight. So since these are uh, the style of artwork that they are for Earth Dancer and Spirit Dancer, I'm almost thinking rather than completely frame them, I may hem stitch around the edges probably put some fabric on the back to help seal those stitches because there's you don't want to look at the back on this with the long stitches with the fringing and the dream catcher there's a lot of longer threads that could easily snag on something but I'm thinking about um, using some of those magnetic frames to fra hang those so we'll see I've also thought that sorry, about to start coughing, that framing them might seal them and preserve the, the those threads and those long stitches a little better. So more to come. I haven't even started Spirit Dancer, and I won't make a decision until I do that. And that's all my finishes for the last two weeks, which I'm pretty pleased with. That's, well, if I count Just Nan as one, that's four finishes. If I count each part of the Just Nan ornament, that's five. So pretty good for two weeks, right? I'm not going to have another week like that, two weeks like that coming up anytime soon. But moving on to whips or works in progress. So last month, I, was it last month? I forget if it was February or January. My whip go call was, one of my whip go calls was Siam Fusion by Sampler Cove. And this is another older piece. I think this is from the early 2000s. And I'm doing this larger piece here, the motif sampler. And I'm sorry if there's glare. Um, this has an actual photograph on the front of the chart. So I'm doing this piece here. And I'm using a 28 count chalkboard cashel linen from Zweigart, a standard color. Um, the models were stitched on black, so this, uh, this, the chalkboard is a really dark gray, but it's also a little easier to see on than straight black. So let me get this folded. So here's where I'm at. And um, really, I, I'm pleased with the progress I got on this. So, and you can see, you know, where there's kind of half random parts of motifs finished. When I have a thread, um, it's blowing out a little bit. When I have a thread, I've been trying to stitch something nearby to finish, finish out the thread. And this is stitched with the called for threads, which are Karen Collection Swa Cristal. So they're all silks and they feel amazing. And they just pull really nicely through the, the linen. I'm very happy with the combination of materials that I'm, I'm using in that one. I'm not sure what it is. And then I sit down to record, I either get a itchy nose like a lot of people or my throat dries out from the talking. I mean, I talk all the time. <laughs> Anybody who knows me, I'm, I'm not one of those people who doesn't talk much, so I'm not sure what the deal is there. But moving on. So my other um, the other piece that I've worked on, and this is one of my March whip go calls, 
is, and that's, I'm, I'm pleased with it because it's one a piece that I'd like to get finished this year and I've been trying to make it a focus piece, is Garden Verses by Mirabilia Designs. And there she is. So her copyright date is 1994. And I kitted her up shortly after she was published. I just fell in love with that purple cape and, and the red. And actually at one point I had kind of considered trying to convert at least the purples and possibly the reds to silks and I never did that but because I kitted her up so soon after she came out in 1994 we didn't really have there there weren't hand dyed five uh, fabrics out there over dyed fabrics uh, we were pretty much still in the world of solid colors so she I chose a 32 count mushroom Lugana I think she was stitched on a either a natural linen or a mushroom linen. Uh, she stitched on 32 count natural linen was what the model was stitched on. So I cho chose a mushroom Lugana. Uh, I was enjoying the fact in, in when I chose the fabric for this, I was very much an even weave stitcher. Uh, that was kind of my first choice. I liked how even the threads were. But here's Here's where she's at. She's still on the Q-snap because I am still working on her. I got a hanging thread here. But the area that I'm working on, where's my little, well, I don't think it's gonna show, show through too much. So the area I'm working on is this, this part of her sleeve over here and her elbow. So I, I don't have a picture of where I was last time, but I got all of this, this fabric over here done, over in here. And the other night I started on this darker brown, which is going to be a ruffle by her sleeve. And really, I'm getting to the point where all that's going to be left is uh, her upper body, her shoulders, and her hair. So this is where I'm at in that. You can see some of this gorgeous purple down here. That was a lot of fun to stitch. So again, uh, it'd be great to have her finished this year. I've got two more stitching sessions on her. I'll talk a little bit more about Whipgo when we get there. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I've also had two starts since we visited last. So last year, um, I'm a member of Fox and Rabbit's Patreon group. Uh, I forget. I'm kind of in the middle tier. I don't get any fabric. You know, their upper tier, you get fabric once a quarter. I think you get a project bag. You get access to all of their charts. I'm in the middle tier, tier where you get... Uh, a small chart and a larger chart per month um, and then occasionally they they do share some extra charts like a I think one year they did a almost like a Halloween advent calendar and they've given us some other freebies so in 2023 one of the bonuses that they came out with for their patreons was this temperature chart and I'm sure you've seen other people stitching temperature charts and I liked th this appealed to me because it's um, you know pretty straightforward I enjoy stitching hearts. So that's the cover. That's the cover photo. So um, in looking at this, and I, I was going to do this all last year, and I started out recording the temperatures, and I, I never did anything with it. And we got all the way through January and February, and I was still recording temperatures, and I was going to start this. I had all the materials, and I was all set to go. So I finally got it started. So. This could be a very straightforward stitch, but uh, I'll show you what I'm doing, and I've made it a little more complicated, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count Vintage Stormy Clouds, which is a standard Zweigart color, but it's one of their printed fabrics, kind of like Vintage Country Mocha. And I thought that would be appropriate for a weather-themed piece. And so the frame is all stitched in DMC 939. And then I was able to adapt and use the colors that Fox and Rabbit suggested for the color ranges. So the, the colors are, oh, let's get them over here. Let's go there. So you can see we've got a really nice rainbow of, of fibers. It's all DMC. And that'll be fun to work on. And I, do, I actually have to add one more color in there because I've, I, after I started stitching this, uh, I decided to change something. And uh, I've got to have one more lower temperature range. So here's where I'm at. I have to, um, I had initially start, I forgot the date was on the top. 
So I'd initially started stitching the top sec top line um, too high, but here's where I'm at so far. So I've got 20, 24, I've got the width, um, it, it does go a little bit further out to this side. But, so what I'm doing is, so let's go over here and let me get closer here. All right, so the hangers here, so you can see the hangers, just these blue lines going down to each heart. So what I'm going to do with them on days where there's precipitation, I have a Krynic that matches DMC 939, which is what I'm stitching the frame in. And on the days that we had precipitation, I stitch the hanger in that Krynic. Days where there are no precipitation, I'm just going to use the regular 939. So I really like Rhodes hearts, and I enjoy stitching them. I think they're fun. So I've changed the hearts to Rhodes Road heart, hearts instead of cross stitches. And um, they're going to be the high temperature each day. There we go. That's a pretty good picture. And then th what I decided to do after I had started stitching is that um, the bows, you can see those two bows are different colors. The bows are going to reflect the low temperature for the day. So there will be a pretty, pretty accurate record of, of what was going on. And I'm going to do it for my hometown. Even if I'm not here, I'm going to do it for my hometown each day. And uh, I have a, a really good site for tracking local temperature and precipitation amounts and such. And, and I kind of like the idea of this. I mean, first of all, it's a fun thing to do, right? Lots of people have been doing them. Um, but both of my grandfathers were farmers for most of their lives. And we have calendars from both of them and diaries from both of them from different parts of their, their lives and farming careers where they tracked the weather and made notes of, you know, precipitation amounts, trends in the weather, dry, and different temperatures and different things that were going on. So I, I kind of feel like that's kind of a family connection there. So uh, it's another reason for me doing that. So that'll be fun. Um, now that I've gotten started, it really it doesn't take long to do each one each day. So I'm going to keep going. I know some people do the week's worth on Sunday. I've really got to get caught up because I'm just starting January and we're, you know, uh, 10 days into March. So uh, we'll see once I get a little more caught up what, what my plan is there going forward. And then my last start, and I apologize, I did not bring, um, here's, my, here's my little board. I forgot to bring the magazine up, but my next start is my other Whipco ornament call. The first one was the gift. This one is... Never Too Big by Dragon Designs, and it's a dragon with a stocking, and he's got his little knight doll. Once the back stitching is in, it'll all be a little more clear. And it says, Never Too Big to Believe, and then it's got some holly borders down the side. So, uh, true confession time, he was on my list of ornaments that I thought that I bought fabric cuts for, and I can't, couldn't find the fabric for him. Let's see, there we go. Couldn't find the fabric for him, so I grabbed a scrap from my stash. Uh, called for a 28 count light beige, and I don't know what color this is. It was the right size, it was the right count, and the colors looked good on it. So he stitched with all the called for uh, fibers, which are mostly DMC. The red in the stocking is uh, Gentle Arts Buckeye Scarlet which is one of my favorite reds, so I was very happy to use that. I had a lot of that in my stash. And I don't know if you can see his tail. So this, this part of his tail and the top part of his crest here, they're stitched in a, a Krynic. I think it's Krynic 850, which was also called for. So this is um, two shifts worth of, actually a stitch and a, a shift and a half's worth of stitching on a nice part about February and March at my partic in my particular area, so it's not real busy. There aren't a lot of people around, and when I'm at 911, there's generally quite a bit of time between calls. So that's what I've worked on. Let me see. Uh, oh, I was also going to share with you a little bit of the statistics that I have from February. I don't count stitches. Um, but I do kind of, I've been doing, trying to track what I'm working on, what I'm starting, and that kind of thing. 
So for the month of February, I stitched 28 days at 29. I did have one day where I just didn't feel like doing anything. Uh, I touched a total of 10 projects. Um, you didn't see all of them because I only did the last two weeks. I started four projects out of eight for January and February, which is about right. There were um, two ornaments each month, and then I've had some other random, mostly planned, but random starts. I finished three projects in March. Um, Earth Dancer was actually fit, finished in February. Or I finished three, I'm sorry, I finished three projects in February. The Gift and A Little Joy were actually finished in March. So they didn't count in, in this number. And th in January and February, I finished a total of nine projects. Uh, as I said, when I asked you guys what you wanted to see, if you wanted to see previous finishes or charts, I got answers that you wanted to see both. So Carla Being Crafty is working on this piece, which is my previous finish. And this is called, let me get something to put behind it, Mouth of the Flower. And the artwork is by Octavio Ocampo. And uh, it's charted by Stitching, the Stitching Studio. I don't know if they're still in business or not. Um, I'm trying to see. The chart, the chart is copyrighted 2008. And I think I probably stitched this this one, she's another big one. I probably stitched this one fairly, fairly soon after it came out because I really love these. So you can see um, on one level, this is a painting of some flowers and leaves with a butterfly. And on another level, it's a lady's face. So like I said, Carla's working on this piece now. So I thought I would share that with you. Um, the reason it's not framed is because I also have the companion piece, which is another piece by Octavio Ocampo. And this one is called Family of Birds. And again, you can see, you know, there's a tree trunk and some birds that are flying towards the tree, but there's also a woman's face. And I have the matching fabric to stitch this one um, along to match the other one, and I'd like to hang them together. Um, the stitch count on these is I mean, you can see it's it's fairly big on the piece. The stitch count is 184 by 260, and the recommended fabric is 32 count lavender mist linen, which is what I used for these. But you can also you can also see you know there's there's quite a bit of unstitched negative space in there too. So I'm gonna leave this one out because this is one another one kind of like Spirit Dancer that kind of getting on my start sooner rather than later list. Uh, and you know we're, we're getting close to the end here of what I've got to share. Next next video I'll, I'll try to have some more. I think maybe I'm gonna keep doing this format unless you guys tell me you really hate it. I'll pick something, a piece or two by the same designer maybe that I have completed. Um, some of them may be FFOs, some of them may just be stitch pieces. And then I'll show you some of the charts I have that I haven't stitched yet uh, by the same designer. We'll see how that works. That kind of appeals to me. Uh, if you guys hate the idea, love the idea, don't care, uh, let me know down below and we'll go forward. So the last day I filmed was the same day that Jessie Marie, she always does the WIPCO number calls for the first of the month, or on the 25th for the first of the following month to give you a couple days to get get prepared and get everything gathered together. So when I filmed, I hadn't seen her video yet with the new numbers. So the new numbers are numbers 1 and 10. So for me, that means my WIPCO goals for my works in progress are going to be Garden Verses, which I've already showed you. So I got my WIPCO goal for each of my whips is four days. And for me, four days is exactly that four times that I pick it up on four different days um, sometimes maybe I'm only gonna have an hour to stitch sometimes maybe it'll be a rainy cold miserable week weekend day and I'll have four hours to stitch I that that's my goal I want my goals to be achievable so I don't get discouraged um, and my main objective through WIPCO is for my whips is to get 
as many of my pieces touched as possible. I've got, I think it was 31 works in progress at the beginning of the year, so I picked 25 of them and put them on the, the WIPCO board. Uh, I, Earth Dancer was called, and that's why I got working on her and got her finished, but Garden Verses is on there five times because I really want to get her finished this year. So if I really get some good progress and I finish her up before the fifth time that she's called, I'll sub one of my other pieces in there to give that four days as well. So the first one was Garden Verses, that was number one, and number ten is Summer Quaker by Leela's Studio. So here's, I'm sure you guys have seen the cover, I know lots of folks are working on this. I started this with Beth from Crafts and Books and Laura from Stitching by the Shore, and I forget what the hashtag they were using for their stitch along was. But here's, here's what the piece looks like. And I just, I love everything about this piece. So, and I kind of, um, kind of took the easy way out and didn't really uh, explore alternate fabrics. We'll put it that way. I had a piece of, uh, this is, I believe it's 16 count. Is it 16 or 18? I'm not sure. I don't remember if this was 16 or 18 count latte Ada. And the, the model was stitched on latte in a linen, and that's by Fiber on a Win. And so here's where I'm at with this. So this will get four days for my whip go. Uh, I've got the water, did, did a fish down here. Um, probably I'll start the buildings next, because we all know how I feel about stitching houses. Uh, but the water was, it was really nice. I did the, the darker colors in the waves. And then I had a lot of fill in, so I, I took it for a couple shifts because it was easy to pick up and, and put down. So that'll be four days for WIPGO, and I'll talk about a couple other challenges that I'm doing, and it'll see um, maybe some extra days, maybe, maybe four days will cover everything that I need to do. So that's my work in progress, WIPGO. My ornaments that need, need to be FFO'd. The two ornaments that were called were, this is Blue Snowflake by The Little Stitcher, right? Um, let me see. Yep, by The Little Stitcher. This is from the Just Cross Stitch 2016 ornament. And I stitched it on a piece of pewter, uh, 32 count pewter Lugana from uh, Picture This Plus. And I know the snowman, I know he's not showing up real well on on camera. Um, he does show up pretty well in person. And I have an idea of how I'm going to finish him. I've got a really good idea for what I'm going to do with him. And then the other piece that was called is uh, Blue Christmas by Black Work Journey. And this is from the 2020 Just Cross Stitch uh, ornament issue. And I used, I think I used the recommended DMC and it's got a little bit of Krynik. I don't know if you can see the little bit of sparkle. It's got a little bit of silver sparkle here and there. And then it's got a border which is uh, white pearl cotton Smyrna crosses. And this is just on a scrap of white Lugana or antique white Lugana. And I'm not even sure if it's a 28 or a 32 count. And that one, I had an idea of how I wanted to finish it, and it's a little too big for what I wanted to do. So I've been rethinking, but I've got, got some more ideas on what I'm going to do with that. And then, um, so I mentioned I'm in a couple other challenges, doing a couple other challenges this month. Uh, one, I belong to the Whip Warriors group on Facebook, and that's a closed group right now. It opens up in November for new members, and uh, they do, you know, they they want to make sure members are participating. The goal is really to get everybody to work on your whips, right? So one of the things they do every month is a categories challenge and they pick a letter and you have 12 prompts and you they, they're to help you guide you with uh, getting some of your whips worked on. So this month the letter is E and I have pieces that fit. So the prompts are the same every month the letter cha changes by month. So there will be 12 letters called. And I have to go back and fix my post because I posted, 
unfortunately in February, not in March. I don't know what I was doing. I was just trying to get it done, but easily done. So the pieces that I'm going to be working on for that, um, so one of the pieces I'm going to be working on for that is, this is Blackbird Designs Loose Feathers Summer. And you can see that's got the letter E in it, and that was what I was using for the prompt. And I'm doing this on a piece of 28 count antique lace Lugana by Seraphim Fabrics. And here's where I'm at. I'm using all the called for threads. I didn't iron it, guys. I generally don't iron my pieces until they're finishes. So this will see, I have to do a minimum of 200 stitches on this one. So I probably, I, I tend to do the same thing with scattergories that I do with uh, my whip go calls. If this is the piece I'm working on, I work on it for that day. Uh, usually that I don't count stitches, but they will allow you to use um, the equation of an hour's worth of stitching equals 100 stitches. So usually if I stitch on something in the evening, I'm, I'm stitching for two and a half or three hours. So I usually, that'll get an evening's worth of work. Uh, Summer Quaker will get used for three different prompts, so that should get that should be fine. Um, you know, my four nights of stitching should get me 600 stitches. Garden Verses will be worked on for two prompts, and again, I'm in good shape there. Another piece that I'm pulling out is Elizabeth Isles, 1799 by the Scarlet Letter. And I'm sure if you've been around Floss Tube for a while, you've seen this one before. This was started for um, a stitch along for a milestone birthday for uh, Laura from Brenda and the Serial Starter here on Floss Tube, and it was Laura's big birthday. Sal was the hashtag they were using. So I really love the bird in the middle of this, and I thought the angels, the cherubs in the the border were kind of funky, and I I just I like this section here. The verse says, "All you my friends who now expect." to see a piece of work thus performed by me cast but a smile on this my mean endeavor I'll strive to mend and be obedient ever uh, and then it says Elizabeth Isles age nine years March the 9th 1799 I don't, I don't love the verse don't hate the verse but I think what I'm going to do and Emily from Emily C on Floss Tube and Eclectic Possessions on Instagram she stitched the bird. I don't remember if she finished it or not. And I'm just going to bring this bottom border up. I'm going to stitch the bird. And I like these two dividing bands in there. I'm going to bring the border up and just leave the uh, leave the verse out. I'm not going to replace it with anything. I'm just going to make the piece smaller. And I'm stitching this on a piece of 30 count um, hemp cross stitch fabric by Jackson Studios. Uh, it's an Etsy shop. I'll try to remember to link it below. And this color is called London Fog. And I liked it, I thought, with the funky angels. And it looks, you know, it looks like an aged piece. So here's where I'm at with that. I'm using a Roxy Floss Co. conversion for the threads. I wanted to try them, and I figured it would be a good project to try it on. Um, I'm really liking, liking them. So I'm not sure what I'm going to work on. So I've got one of the pink carnations started here. And if you look closely at the chart, you'll notice that the carnation here that I've got in brown and pink, it shows kind of red on the camera, but it's really one of the brown shades, is stitched in the wrong colors. And I'm okay with it, and I'm going to leave it because it's kind of a funky-looking piece, and it's not realistic, and I'm just going to go with it. Uh, by the time I figured it out, I really didn't feel like pulling that out and restitching it. So that's where I am on Elizabeth Isles. And that'll see that'll see two days worth of work. Another piece that I'm pulling out is To All a Good Night by Autumn Lane Citry. This has been generally released. I got it fully kitted as part of the Black Needle Society Nice List box in 2022. So it's being stitched with the Cold Ford DMC on the recommended 28 count opalescent Belfast linen. 
And here's where I'm at with that. So this is really cool because all the white in this is not stitched. It's all negative space. So that'll be, it's been a fun stitch so far. I, this is, I don't know, maybe two stitching sessions here. Um, and I, I really enjoyed working on this piece. I'd like to get this finished for the brag table at the Queen City Stitch Retreat uh, in October this year. So the uh, last year, the Brad table, they asked us only to bring Mirabilia's or Nora Corbett pieces. Nora was the featured designer. This year, Autumn Lane Stitchery is the featured artist. And the Brad table is open to anything, not just Autumn Lane Stitchery pieces. But I would like to have an Autumn Lane piece to be able to take. So I'm hoping to get that done. And that will see, for this challenge, that'll see one day's worth of work. And then the last piece for categories that I'll be working on is my birthday start, which is Sarah Mary Larkworthy 1727 by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. And I have loved this since I first saw her. Um, the colors are actually a little different than they show on the cover piece, but I'm also doing the DMC conversion uh, rather than the silks that it's called for. And I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count Sienna by Tropical Stitches. And here's as far as I had gotten. So she's pretty wide. Um, and I had gotten the top two bands done, the, the stitch cross stitch bands done, and those red stitches are all eyelets, and then I had started on the alphabet. So this one will get four categories. This will get two um, stitching sessions as well. And so that that's my categories pieces. So um, I'm trying to do a mix of getting decent amount of progress on pieces that fit the prompts. So maybe getting pieces that'll fit multiple prompts and picking a variety of pieces to work on throughout the month. So I think I'm, I'm accomplishing quite a bit here. And then Laura, Stitching by the Shore, Laura is her Facebook group. She's stitching by the shore here on YouTube. I'll link the Facebook group and her YouTube below. And in her Facebook group, she's been doing, she did last month and she did it again this month. It's a lot of fun. It's um, an I Spy Challenge. So she gives us prompts and her prompts change each month. And we try to, you know, work, and these can be new starts. These can be whips, projects that fit the, fit the prompts. And she gives us 10 prompts and I've got pieces to fit all 10. And for those, um, Summer Quaker will get one, uh, one day for that challenge. To All A Good Night will get two sessions for that. My Temperature Hearts will get a session for that. Um, a gift, which is already completed, so I checked off one prompt. Never Too Big will get, if it lasts that long, Never Too Big would get three prompts. Otherwise, I'll have to find some other things for that. And the last piece that I hope to pull out and work on this year is this year, this month, and this will meet two prompts in Laura's challenge, is Edith Wolford by uh, The Silver Lining. And this is not the cover chart. This is a copy from my working copy. I copied the cover chart as well. So... And I admit, I picked this because if you look at, I wanted to see Mark Sastat, it was the artist and the designer. And he did, um, he does amazing things with colors. And I really wanted to see what he did with those yellows and purples. And um, there's a couple of browns in there, but when they're all together, it's all really going to work well. I've stitched some of his roses. I tend to like roses better than irises. I'm not a huge iris fan. But I really wanted to see how the colors played out in this one. And I'm pretty sure this is the direction that this one goes in. And I haven't touched this in ages. So this will get uh, three, no, two sessions for Laura's, Laura's challenge. So I'm looking forward to that. I. I've put away all the, it's all DMC thread, and i put them all away. I've got to pull them all out again. Uh, and this looks like it's a piece of cashel, and it's either white. I, I think it's antique white um, because 
I went through a stage where I really preferred stitching on linen rather than even weave. And now I'm back to where I'll stitch on anything, especially now that we have hand dyed Ada's and they're I'm a person, I prefer a softer fabric. I don't like witch out linen. I don't like how stiff it is. Um, I don't like stiff and scratchy Ada. I prefer the softer linens and how they feel in my hand. So that's my plans. Uh, those are monthly plans, so we'll see in two weeks how much I have to share with you. Uh, so far this year, I've been doing really well with having stitching time, but once the weather gets better, we tend to do more outside, and I probably just I probably, hopefully, will be able to stitch on the same number of pieces. I just probably won't have the um, amount of time in each stitching session, which is kind of why I set up my WIPGO board for my works in progress to be um, four days or four stitching sessions. And for the ornaments, I really just want to get a good start on them. If I get them finished each month, that's a bonus. But if all I really want to do is get a good start on them, like um, a little joy from just Nan. That was a January piece, and I got a really good start on it. Um, I needed some time with some good light to be able to sit down and do that one over one stitching, and I finally got that. So uh, I think that's about everything I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, Life-wise, um, we're doing well here. Last week was kind of a bittersweet weekend. It was the first anniversary of my dad's passing and we got together for a fa we had a family gathering, a dinner, and shared lots of stories and lots of laughs, which my dad would appreciate. Um, he felt that you needed to smile and laugh at least once a day to have a successful day and we've tried to keep that on, that tradition going on. Um, but we also all admitted how much we we miss him and will continue to miss him. Um, I come from a very close-knit family and um, I know I, I'm lucky to have had my dad for as long as we did. Um, I know there are people, including my husband, who haven't had that blessing. But So we got through that. Um, that was the last of our year of firsts, so hopefully things will be a little bit easier this, day, this year on special days and important days. Um, but my mom is doing great, and she's, you know, the rest of us are doing well as well. Um, my youngest nephew turned 16 last month, so he now have his, has his driver's permit. And my sister is, and brother-in-law are working on getting him some time behind the wheel and some teaching. Uh, my oldest nephew will graduate from high school in May, so he's starting to get ready for that, and he'll be going on to college next year. So baseball season is starting. They'll both be playing baseball. My oldest nephew also plays on his varsity golf team. So lots of exciting, fun stuff to keep us all busy. Uh, looking forward to getting our camper back out and um, having some local trips soon. Uh, probably Memorial Day will probably be our first, our first expedition. And next month we will go to Delaware to the races, but I think we're going to do a um, either a hotel or a VRBO for that. Um, got some things we need to do with the camper. So other than that, we're going to keep on stitching and crafting. I hope you are all well. Uh, stitch on what you love, as Sarah from Sarah Stitchy Spot and so many of us others say. And I uh, hope you'll come back again. Hope you enjoyed what I had to share. And see you soon. Love you.